Hey, good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. Here is a, a creation article, uh, some some uh, uh, commentary on apparently the latest uh, understanding of evolution that uh, that you know if God created humans and the male reproductive system, he could have done it better. If there was an intelligent designer, he would have designed male testicles in a better fashion and protect them. <laughs> Let's. Let's take a look at this one. It's interesting. Is the male reproductive system poorly designed? So the question is out there. <clears throat> and it says, One of the latest proofs of human evolution is a claim of a poor design, namely that the, an intelligent creator would not design some human body part in a certain way. An example is a male reproductive system. It goes on to say, The human male reproductive system's uh, poor design claim focuses on the view that if testicles were designed, then why didn't God protect them better? Couldn't the designer have put them inside the body or encase them in bone, like the brain which is surrounded by a hard skull? It says, concluding that a body structure is poorly designed, as Oxford University PhD professor claims, instead of asking why the existing design exists, is a science stopper, it says. The why question motivates research into reasons for design, when this approach was applied to the human appendix, the tonsils, the backward retina, and many uh, putative other examples of supposed poor design, good reasons for existing designs were found. So what's, what's the deal here? Well, male testicles, the reasons for the, the design, you know, so the question is, again, why, why are the testicles outside of the body? Uh, wouldn't it be uh, uh, better to have them inside the body, protected in a quote-unquote uh, temperature-stable environment, etc. Um, Haffer explained that when she was looking for new approaches to refute intelligent design, uh, she knew she had a winner in the middle of an anatomy and uh, physi uh, physiology lecture. She concluded that the male reproductive system is a great first argument against intelligent design. She believed that she also had a good political style argument against uh, ID, intelligent design. Her main argument is that because male testicles are outside of the body, they are prone to injury. She adds that in many animals, including cold-blooded reptiles, they are located inside the body where they are fully protected. So what is the creationist view of the purpose of this? Let's take a look at it. Male testicles exist outside the body in humans and most mammals for several important reasons. And uh, so if you didn't know this, here you go. Including effective regulation of scrotal temperature, for optimal uh, spermatogenesis development. Another reason is to keep sperm relatively inactive until they enter warm confines of the female reproductive system. Even just a few degrees above optimal temperature is detrimental to both sperm production, specifically in the later stages of uh, spermatogenesis and sperm maturation. So there's uh, the whole reason they're outside the body in a scrotum is for temperature regulation. And if, obviously you'll note that if you get cold, uh, then they retreat inside the body to where they're warmer. So the body actually automatically regulates uh, where um, the testicles are based on the temperature, based on optimal, uh, optimal temperature zone uh, for them at any certain, at any period of time, whether in the winter or in the summer, etc., where it's hot or cold. It says that low ambient uh, temperatures, a, a, a low am ambient temperature, temperature is essential for normal spermatogenesis in humans and most mammals because enzymes require, uh, <clears throat> required for the process are denatured if their temperature is not finely regulated. Um, it goes on here. Um, it goes on, you know, it shows, I'll, I'm going to link this uh, in the description of the article you can, or of the, uh, the video. You can read all about the temperatures, etc., where it finely tunes and regulates the temperature based on whether the testicles are in the scrotum or inside the body, and they can't be e in either place at all times. If the testes, it says, were inside the body, the enzyme sperm required to be healthy would be denatured in a matter of hours. And if it was always in the body, then new sperm would have to be constantly produced to allow humans to be fertile year-round. So notice that, year-round. So in winter and in summer, hot and cold, as is normal for humans. This issue would not be a concern for most animals that are fertile only during very short windows each year. So if, if it doesn't matter whether they're fertile or not, then, uh, you know, it can be inside the body or outside the body. 
and uh, then the body can do what it needs during the fertile time. But if for humans, obviously, um, we uh, need to be fertile all year round, um, and so God intelligently designed the body to do just that, which I think is interesting. It says, furthermore, to maintain proper temperature, uh, the arteries carrying blood into the scrotum run alongside the veins that carry blood away. This sophisticated heat exchanger system mechanism lowers the temperature of the blood supplying supply traveling to the testicles. The warm arterial blood coming from the abdomen loses the heat to the cooler uh, venous blood coming away from the testicles. The result is that the blood is cooled slightly before even entering the scrotum. Uh, interestingly, uh, I, I don't know, I just, that's incredible. Uh, for these reasons, the existing system is an excellent design, well known to engineers as counter current exchange to maintain optimal, optimal spermatogenesis temperature control. So the scrotum is a temperature, a highly a sophisticated temperature control um, uh, uh, cover or, or uh, location for the testicles. The design uh, is widespread in biological systems, it goes on. So it just, you know, it goes on about the, um, the year-round fertility required, the uh, protective designs. Several designs uh, reduce the likelihood of testicle injury, including the left, side, left testicle hanging lower than the right one. So did you know that? As a result, pressure causes one to slip past the other without pain or injury, so that they're not, if they were hanging at the exact same level, um, pressure uh, would cause them to uh, crush against each other. But in this way, they slip past each other. One goes under the other and um, um, so minimizes potential energy, uh, potential, uh, potential injury, uh, I can't talk, injury uh, from sports, etc. Each testicle is housed in a strong fibrous outer covering called the tunica albuginea, and an effective lubrication system allows the slippage to occur without pain or problems. You know, all these little things got designed into it. Just the, the different lengths of the testicles, the left always lower than the right. <clears throat> God designed these into the human body. So I, it's amazing when you take a look at the science behind this. And the more intriguing, intelligent design they find, the more they want to explain a way that, wow, this can't be God. This kind of this has to have happened from a big bang that happened billions of years ago, and it's all random chance that these things occurred. It says, injury is rare. The main source of injury is in sports which is why it is recommended that sports participants always use protective equipment, such as a jock strap hard cup while playing. So, I mean, it, it goes on. Evolution of the scrotum? No, it, it's not happening. So how does this uh, article conclude? It says, in conclusion, clear uh, evidence exists that year-round reproductive cycles plus requirement for human sperm must be kept close to a constant temperature of 4 degrees Celsius. Uh, below that of the core body temperature effectively explains the existing design of the testicles. Men who have uncorrected, non-descended testicles, testicles that haven't come out of the body, are usually infertile and prone to many other health problems, including cancer. In short, the existing complex design is required for many reasons, including fertility and health reasons. It is therefore clear that Haffer's poor design claim, uh, along with those of other evolutionists, is grossly irresponsible. And, uh, you know, they always, they always pick on something and they say, ah, I've got it. This is a poor design. Uh, this means that there was no intelligent design. Uh, come to find out if you research a little bit, if you look into it a little bit, if you use science to understand it a little bit with temperatures, etc., and look at uh, um, the, the physical nature of the, uh, uh, of the environment that they had to endure, you then understand that, in fact, no, it, it was highly intelligent designed from the beginning. Pretty fascinating stuff, guys. Uh, I love this stuff. This is from creation.com. I'll put the link in the, in the description. You can check out uh, check out the article um, and, uh, you know, read through the various temperature um, specifications, etc. All the background, all the science behind why sperm um, has to be temperature controlled. Um, but the end result is that ultimately God designed us. We are made in the image of God. He loves us. He died for us uh, 2,000 years ago. He's coming again. Hard times are coming, um, but you can know that uh, Genesis is accurate. Um, the Lord is truth, and he is real, and he is uh, he created this earth for us to live in. It's only about 6,000 years old, and he's coming again. That's ultimately it. And we're going to stand before him at one time and, and be judged uh, according to all the sin in our lives. And if we don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, um, we'll be living in eternity 
apart from God, and you do not want to do that, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. Check out the article, and we'll see you guys in the next video.